you're just trying to be a homesteader, but you're not actually a homesteader. The hardest part about being a homesteader is actually believing that you are one. When you first get started, it kind of feels like you're balancing 101 projects and you're not really sure if you're being terribly successful at any of them. It's easy to start feeling like an imposter. It, it can be a bummer to get to that spot where you start really doubting yourself because so much of all of this is learning constantly, putting yourself in new situations, researching stuff you never thought you would research, like mastitis and mineral imbalances and caterpillar infestations on fruit trees and just random stuff that you'll find you're suddenly researching at 11 o'clock at night when you're tired and you want to go to bed but you really need to know more about this sudden issue that popped up. It's it's such a humbling process to begin with that like even if you're the most confident person in the world I think it can still humble you but if you don't counteract that I think that the feelings of feeling like an imposter can start to kind of swallow you up and that self-doubt can really creep in and so for me one thing that I have found that's really helpful is to just kind of like go back to the beginning of why like why are we doing this what was that first spark what what got you inspired to live this way and go back to that and focus on nurturing that flame and that inspiration can really help just overcome those dark days and give you that fuel and almost kind of it doesn't necessarily make the imposter syndrome go away but i think it makes you more immune to the negative effects of that because we're three years in and I feel just as much like a beginner as I did the first day, probably even more so. And so like if I were to focus on that, this is super discouraging to think that I'm three years in and further back behind, but it's just a perception thing. The advent of social media, there's a lot of great things that come from it, but it also means that you can start to compare yourself and for the people that are able to live 100% off grid, 100% off the land, they haven't been to a grocery store in 10 years. That's not my reality, um, but I definitely think that it's cool that people are doing that. But that doesn't mean that what we're doing here doesn't qualify as homesteading. I mean, none of us are really homesteading unless you're living somewhere where you can like claim the land and the government's in like the traditional legal sense, most of us are more like modern homesteaders. We're all kind of using this word generously, I feel like, but when that imposter syndrome comes up, just going back to that inspiration for what you're doing, being kind to yourself that even if you're just a beginner or you know, even if we're all just modern homesteaders, what we're doing is still really cool. And focusing on that, on how it's cool and it's exciting that kind of just makes the rest of that negativity have less of an impact. It's kind of like putting on like your bubble suit, I feel like. But that's something I struggle with all the time is that imposter syndrome. Are we really doing this by the book to the T? And the answer is no, like we're not. But I think that's part of the excitement is that homesteading brings with it a lot of freedom to think independently, solve problems on the fly, and your version of it is gonna be different than my version, and it's that creativity and independence that kind of makes it a daily adventure. That being said, just because I am passionate about it and you might be passionate about it, I have found that friends and family are not necessarily passionate about it. My husband and I came from the city and being city kids, that means most of our friends and family and social network are from that too. And they don't really, they don't really share our interests. They're not really passionate about livestock or canning or living off the land. And so even if, even though we have friends and family come over, their lack of interest in it can contribute a little bit to a feeling of isolation. And it's kind of like a strange experience. like 
being lonely in a crowd or something like that where like this big huge part of your life you want to share it with others because it's such a big lifestyle like it's not a casual hobby it takes up a lot of time and resources and energy etc so to not be able to share that with friends and family that are interested in it it can be hard and it can be isolating even though it's like hey we're having company over but you know if someone's not really interested in seeing like the baby goats or the way you're living or the different animals or that's just not their thing that's totally okay like i know i can't expect people to have my same interests that would be illogical but i do think it's important to realize that just because you have friends and family if you don't have people that share this interest because it is such a big like commitment it can start to feel isolating the more i think about it the more i have started to realize that it should be treated as far as your homestead is like the same way that you would like treat predators as a threat to your livestock i think that isolation is a threat to you as a homesteader and your family because we all need to feel like we can we can connect and we can share all the parts or you know the really important parts of our lives with each other and so having people that you can call on is key and the more that my husband and I focus on this the more I've realized how important it it is so we talked about imposter syndrome I wanted to talk about that isolation and then the next one I really want to talk about is uncertainty it's a really weird feeling to pursue something with all of your energy and your your family's resources and to like make such a big decision because for I think the average person when you're going off and getting a homestead like you're probably putting everything you have to, to get that because it's it's hard to get a house let alone a house with some land um, even if you're renting or doing a community garden like there's a lot of hustle and work that goes with sourcing that out and to pour yourself into something and to not know what you're going to get back that is hard like the last thing that i wanted to say and i'll leave it at this is that there is hard parts no matter what we can't escape and take an easy path ever because even if we say okay i'm never gonna take a risk and i'm just gonna you know stay wherever i am in life and i'm not going to put myself out there or um just go for this dream it doesn't have to be homesteading whatever it is that in itself is a huge risk in action is still risky it's a weird thing to think about by no means am i like some philo philosophical expert but it's something i like to remind myself that we're not necessarily safe by staying inside and doing nothing that staying stuck and doing nothing and never taking a risk to push yourself to go explore a dream and find out if it's for you that missed opportunity could be the biggest risk of all and just by taking a risk in the first place you've taken a much more sensible option because you are literally testing out an idea a notion a dream a hunch or whatever it is that xyz might be for you and you will never find out if you don't go for it so that is something i really try to remind myself <laughs> so anyways i think what i'm trying to say is that the blessings that we have around us if we're not careful we can start to look at them as burdens and as much as i would love to say that i'm able to turn that ship around whenever I'm feeling that way and do a 180 pivot. Uh, that's something I'm still working on. Every now and then I get a few days where I feel out of sorts and I start to wonder like, is this really the best fit? And I don't ever want to silence those questions. I love that I question these things 
as long as it's coming from like a place of truth of really genuinely wanting to know and not just like self-destructive doubt that's just like talking me out of doing something that I really really want to do so my husband and I are both really passionate about just enjoying where we're at in life in this season on this homestead and I think as long as we're enjoying ourselves even through the hard work like even through the hardship then we don't question whether it's worth it we know that it's worth it but whenever we get off track and it starts to feel like mm, like the homestead is becoming counterproductive to the values that we have in place that like drove us to pursue this lifestyle in the first place that's when it can get a little confusing and with that i will talk to you guys soon